The Small Business Show, episode 159 for Thursday, February 22nd, 2018. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we're the show all about small business, buy for and about small business owners. Sponsors for this episode include Jamf, where at Jamf, J-A-M-F dot com slash S-B-S, you get three devices for free for life in their small business mobile device management service. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How goes it, man? It goes. I'm having technical difficulties today, but, but we've, <laughs> right. we've spared our listeners from this. So we there got you go. it. Yes, uh, we yes, got yes. It. That's right. We put in the extra effort for you. <laughs> Yeah, some days. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Hey, so we're kind of doing a, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? A a chat about a a uh, a reaction show? Yeah. Yeah, because a a lot of times what happens, you know, we have these awesome guests on and they tell their whole story and then we kind of zip out. And after, you know, we, everybody uh, hangs up and disconnects. I'm sitting here going, oh, I really, we want to talk about this thing they mentioned or that thing they mentioned. So yeah, the drive, uh, the drive homers, right? Those thoughts. Yeah. The drive homers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I, yeah, I want to do that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a couple things, you know, we, we want to chat about today and I want to start with, uh, uh, we had Corey good, excuse me, Corey Goodero from G4 design on uh, a couple weeks ago. And one of the things that struck me as we were talking and I was looking through their website and, uh, what, and, and they were telling, he was telling his story and what they offered was that th- there's a, a very clear benefit in just telling your story like he was doing and having someone else go, oh, wow, I didn't know you did that. Or I didn't, oh, I don't see that service offered or because, you know, what w- in their particular case, what they are offering was, I thought, so much broader and, and, uh, encompass so much more than, than what they were telling on their website. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I, I it really was same way. Yeah. 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 It wasn't just web design because when I, when I, when I was like, wow, that's, that's a gotta be challenging, you know, to compete in that market. There's a gazillion web designers and people do, you know, stuff for nothing, but actually it, it's, you know, it was a t- complete marketing program, SEO, logo design. I mean, it was really everything to take your small business, you know, uh, especially if you're just getting started or revamping something you've had for a while, bringing it current and uh, uh, creating a, a modern interface and a modern story for your business. And and I just thought we should chat about that for a little bit as, you know, ways to do that. You know, obviously right. you could come on, come on the small business show. If you've got your business and you want to talk about it and share your story, we'd love to have you uh, feedback at business but even just talking to your colleagues or, uh, you know, that kind of stuff or going to a trade show or a conference. Well, I, I find think it's it, really beneficial. I find it a lot when, uh, you know, when we get sponsors on the podcast, um, and I've been, obviously sponsors are a relatively new thing for us here, but I've been doing it yeah. with Matt Kikab for over a decade. And we now force our sponsors to do these calls where we get together and, and I say force, we strongly encourage, obviously sure, paying sure. the bills if they don't want to do it. Well, you know, okay, fine. But, uh, but we do strongly encourage people to have that conversation because other, what I found was, you know, they'd send their talking points but unless they're really professionals, it, it, I'm sorry, unless they're really experienced at doing this and have made some mistakes already, the talking points probably aren't going to tell the whole story. Right. Sure. And, it a makes lot, sense. and a lot of times the website's not going to tell the whole story because really what needs to happen when a sponsor comes on board is they need us to understand the way they want their story told. And that's oh, very different sure. from the story that I would choose to tell after visiting your website and using your product. Now, maybe you want me to tell that story, right? If you hear that from yeah, me, right, you say, oh, right. that, well, that's even better. You know your audience. Great. But a lot of times that's not what they want. They want their own message. They have some new feature that they're highlighting or, you know, they have their own short term marketing objectives. And obviously we're, you know, we're part of that. So we need to be sensitive to what they want us to talk about and yeah, what features sense. they want us to highlight. And 
so many times when I just, in fact, I had a call like that with a, a guy this morning. He's a, a solopreneur developer uh, in, I think he's in Israel, in fact. And, uh, but anyway, I just get them talking and when they, you know, they tell this, like he told the story about how he started creating his product. He's like, I'm really lazy. And so I created this thing to be able to control my Mac mini as a remote from my iPhone. And it was like, ah, now I understand. It's like from reading your website, honestly, man, I have right. no idea. That's like the goal of this thing. Ah, yeah. You know, and yeah. And that, and that's powerful when they, w you can kind of tease that out, right? You yes. Know, you, while you're trying to get them. Okay. Cause you're experienced in, okay, how do I present this? And what do we really want to say? And, 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 and you're having that discussion and it's a really powerful exercise to have. And I think it, it, speaking in my own, uh, case as well, as you build this, website or whatever it is you, you've got you're, you're you're portraying things and you as the founder or whatever are looking at it going oh this is great i know this is just what i want to say but then other people look at it and go well i don't i don't know what you're saying right what, what do you really want to say here why aren't you or how why about don't, this why don't you say that yeah why don't you just say it and yep. and i i have definitely sometimes you kind of get tunnel vision you know and and well, so you, having you totally some, do you know, and it's easy yeah, to lose yeah. sight of sort of the foundation of whatever your product is because as time goes on you iterate right i mean in a in a developer's yeah. case it's a very you know intentional iteration but even just with your business in general you're constantly iterating and it's the new shiny thing that you're excited about. And that's, that's right. Great. Yeah. Your customers will probably be excited about that too. If they understand it in relation to the bigger picture. So sometimes you still just have to lead with the big picture and it's hard. I agree. Like you said, you get tunnel vision. Yep. So it is hard. It's helpful to, you know, to, to give somebody your elevator pitch for your company and have them look at your website and say, yeah. Okay. Right. I see the same thing or wow. I didn't get that from your website at all. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you don't have anybody, you know, uh, they, they, what are they looks looking at, or you want some help? I mean, go post it in the, the small business support group on Facebook and yeah. ask other business owners say, Hey, here's what we offer. Here's the website. What do you think? I, I, I get that from, you know, we hang out in a, a podcast group up on Facebook that I, I see it all the time. Hey, would you go look at my website? Or would you listen to this episode? Tell me what you think. Giving each other feedback really helps and, and can help define your message because you really only have a few seconds, right? When they, when they land, hit your landing page and you know, people don't read a lot. And so you really have to grab their attention and say, you know, these are the points that we want to make in yep. 10 seconds or 20 seconds, whatever it is. And then if they want to learn more, you can kind of drill down and go, Oh, I need help with this. So I'm going to click that button and learn a little bit more about it. But, and you uh, do have to I, simplify, I, you know. right? I, I oh, mean, yeah. And maybe that's, you know, with G4 design, maybe that's their thing. You go to their website. The first be. thing it says is professional web design company. And then it's yeah. like custom design, development, marketing. There's these other things, but that they, maybe, maybe they've found maybe, that yeah. over the years that this is the right way to funnel people into Could that. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Where you have to educate, you know, bring them in a little at a time and then, yep. and then educate it. And, uh, and I, I can tell you from, I, I do a lot of business, uh, on social platforms now, and I still do a ton of business on eBay and everything. And it really, you know, for, pr especially for products, it's, it's like shopping by photo and you know, no matter how many words or description things you want to put in there, most people, uh, you, you get, you get them for just a very short time. So you have to really pick and choose about what you put in the text yep. and know that your title, that 80 characters or so in some case, 50 characters, uh, needs to really tr portray what you're doing. Uh, and, and they may not dig down and, and you can't bury stuff in that long text because people just won't pay attention to it. And you can't then rely on it later if something goes wrong and they say, well, I didn't know that, you know, you can't say, well, buried down here in paragraph four, yeah. we told you that, you know, that it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, no. Yeah. It, it's, it's like my, you know, terms and conditions, it, it, they don't work. I mean, if, if for a small business, you can have those and you should uh, in case things really go sideways. But, you know, 
if you have to rely on, you know, legalese and stuff buried in terms and conditions to defend yourself against your customers, I would argue that there's something fundamentally wrong with your your business. Oh, if you're the, relying or, or on the that. way you're, yeah, or the yeah. way you're doing your business, because I, I used to just tell my people, it's like, you know, we have those terms and conditions, but I mean, come on, I mean, we're going to make it right. If they're not happy, yeah. I don't care who did it or what happened. Let's take care of it and move on. And, uh, you know, cause otherwise it turns into a huge, uh, brouhaha and it's, you know, not going to do it. Yeah. You can't, so. that can't be the foundation of your, your business. Cause you'll get any customer will, will be yep. there only ever once. And maybe, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's it's important. So but anyway, I'm, I'm glad we touched base on that. And I would encourage everyone, all of us to, uh, you know, get that kind of feedback. It just really hit me as we were having that discussion a couple weeks ago. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, you know, I want to take a quick minute here and talk about our sponsor for this episode, because I think this is the kind of thing that is great for your small business, because I use it with mine. It's Jamf now, J-A-M-F dot com slash S-B-S is where you'll go. What Jamf now is, is it's a device management solution for all your Apple devices at work. And here's the thing. You don't need to be a geek to understand or even enjoy using this. I'm a geek, but I don't like to have to be one all the time. And that's what I love about Jamf now, too. It makes your management tasks simple, affordable, and easy. That way you can support your users. No IT required. And again, you can create a free account. Go to Jamf, J-A-M-F dot com slash S-B-S. You can track up to three devices for free with that account for life. You'll never pay for your first three devices. Whatever they are at the time, you're not paying for it. Beyond that, it's two bucks a month per device. And you can track and control your Mac, your iPad, your iPhone, but even more importantly, you can track your employees, Macs, iPads, and iPhones. And this uses a really cool thing called mobile device management that's built into all your Apple devices. So you can do things like reconfiguring someone's Wi-Fi network remotely, reconfiguring their email, changing settings. You can deploy applications. You can protect data. You can even lock or wipe a device remotely. Doesn't have to be on your network. Doesn't have to be in your office. Once you've configured uh, Jamf now for that device under your company's account, you're good to go. So you got to check this out. It's really, really cool stuff. And like I said, super easy to use. So visit jamf.com jamf.com slash sbs and start your uh start your new technology management life today our thanks to jamf at jamf.com slash sbs and jamf now for sponsoring this episode yeah and then last week we had uh uh here shot yeah Mahir shah the ceo of drobo on and gosh it was fascinating because Here's a guy that's done lots of things with big companies and then stepped back into what was a, a, a large company at, you know, one time 50 million in revenue, but not, not profitable. Uh, and, and that's always my, my, my yardstick for, oh, is this a good business or not? You know, uh, yeah. it's, it's easy to do big numbers, but it's harder to make a profit. And then Positive he stepped in. cash flow. That's right. Yeah. 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 He stepped in, uh, well, 10 years after they were founded to, to really come in and try to straighten things out. And now they're a smaller company, but it seems like they're uh, doing much better. And, and uh, he's a fascinating guy, had tons of great things to talk about mergers and acquisitions. And, and one of the things he talked about was uh, he, he mentioned this concept of a deal sponsor, which I was not familiar with at all. I'd never heard it before either. And as soon as he said it, and he said it a lot, uh, it was like, whoa, the bells were like ringing in my head. Like, oh, this is, I didn't even realize that this existed, but of yeah, course yeah, it does. Right. You know, right. and it, and, and I, the, the concept is at least as, as I interpreted it is when it, a very large company is, uh, I guess really any size company is sure. acquiring There's another, um, there's one person that is the cheerleader for that particular, uh, you, you know, acquisition and that particular deal. And they've got a lot riding on the success of that deal uh, in terms of their, you know, 
uh, social capital amongst their their, oh, their peers, and even their right? career, even their, their career, career path, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. That's it, it was interesting that uh, you know. I mean, they're essentially the champion of that of this deal. Yeah, okay, I, yeah. I've either I believe that we need this. Uh, you know, this product or these people or this uh, intellectual property or this technology. And I think, you know, we need to bring them on board. And it totally makes sense that there is one point person that is ultimately going to be uh, accountable to make this thing work. And, you know, uh, Mahir talked a lot about really getting to know the the owners or the the people that were going to the founders or the president that's going to come over with this uh, with this business to see if there's a fit culturally and how they run it and you know we talked about on the show a lot too we call it the beer test right yeah and yeah. maybe it's a coffee test if you, if you don't drink beer but sure. you know uh, or a glass of wine or whatever it is but uh, you know having a beer or a drink with somebody and chatting personally you learn a lot about them and the way they. I, to your point, Dave, you mentioned the uh, the way they treat, uh, or, or we were talking about the, we had a show where the way they treat the wait staff, yeah, uh, and and you know how that impacts, and so you you learn just a lot about them that have nothing to do with their business, but actually has everything to do. with It has their everything business. to do with it, and and if it's yeah. a very small company, uh, I've even seen people bring spouses on those, you know, beer test or, oh, yeah. you know, sure. dining experience things. If, if you feel like, look, this is, you know, this is someone's life and I'm, you know, I need to know how, like what the interaction is, how much support are they getting from yeah. home for something like this? And honestly, now that I say that, that's almost more important if you're if you're starting a business with someone, right? If they've oh yeah, if they've got that's a, true. You know, if they're married or whatever, they've got a family. They 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 have they're not just a lone wolf. It, you know, getting together and just making sure everybody's like, yeah, I understand. I'm not going to see you for a while. That kind of thing. You know, like, yeah, that's important. That's true. It's a, it really is. Do they you know do, do they have buy in? Does the spouse have buy-in on this you, concept? You need that. I mean, sure. I know, I, I oh, I know yeah. that you and I have both, uh, you know, had great buy-in from our wives. And without that, I, I mean, we couldn't Mo- do this. Much more difficult. It yeah. would be difficult. Yeah, I don't even know how it It is work. difficult. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's a challenge. So, you know, uh, so that, you know, back to the kind of deal sponsor. So you have this person that really is bringing everything back and they're the ones that have to you know, oversee everything. And, uh, it was fascinating that, uh, that's who you, as a small business, let's say you're getting, you know, you, you got approached by someone. Well, I think you also have to do that due diligence. The other way is, okay, who is this person that's, br- you know, bringing this, uh, concept of acquiring us or merging with us and, uh, uh, you know, what what's their personality like and what yeah. does it say about the culture of this company? Cause you, you know, you read about it over and over these large companies acquiring these uh, other businesses. And then, you know, within a couple of years, boom, everybody takes off, right? Everybody who came on board is like, Oh, I don't want to be here. Uh, or the founder left or these kinds of things after their, uh, you know, contract ran out. So I, th- I think, protecting yourself as a small business. I mean, it may sound very glamorous and certainly financially, it may have a dramatic impact on your life, but who, you know, what is it going to be? You started the, your company for a reason, yeah. either for that autonomy and flexibility or to solve that problem, to have this, you know, close connection with your clients, your customers. Are you going to have that at, at, if this deal happens and, can you commit a hundred percent and are you strong enough to walk away if, uh, especially from the money, I would say, uh, it, you know, w- when I sold, you know, I've, I've sold a few companies and, and the, the last one that we sold, it really became clear to me. Uh, and my wonderful wife pointed it out. It's like, you're not the guy anymore to run this business. Uh-huh. It, we, we need, the business needs someone else. Well, maybe you're in that position. You know, if, if you maxed out your skill set or, you know, your knowledge of how to grow it bigger, if that's important. Um, so, so there's a lot to do with it. I think that you have to think about just like the deal sponsor if from a larger company is thinking about how do we make this work and can how we, do we make it work? You know? Yeah. And that's, yeah, you that's know, cool. even after the, uh, the, you know, the deal is done, 
Like that person, that's when that person's job is really on the line, right? Is yeah. now it's got to succeed because we just spent all this money. So, yeah. Right. And you yeah. have to smooth out the bumps and you, you're the liaison, I would imagine, between yeah. these these groups that may have, well, certainly are going to have some conflicting cultural issues as well, maybe as business practices. And so you really have to be invested in this thing uh, to, to make it work. Um, if, if you didn't hear that episode, it, you know, it was 158. Uh, it, it really is. I think it's probably the most important episode we've ever recorded related to uh, mergers and acquisitions. Um, it, it was fantastic, especially from the other side um, of a, a larger company buying this, this uh, smaller deal. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. And then at the, at the same time, uh, Mahir mentioned that he had written uh, an article up on the Drobo website, uh, the five C's of a uh, of a successful turnaround. And I thought that was really uh, uh, fascinating. And, and I, I enjoyed reading it. And I thought we ought to chat about it here as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So he wrote this. He actually called it the five C's of a successful hardware company turnaround. Ah, there you go. So, yeah. it, you know, we'll we'll couch some of or it. It, it is all couched that way. But but I I think most of these lessons apply kind of everywhere. So and yep. and number one, obviously applies everywhere. Customer connections personally yeah. connect with your customers. So what he's saying is, you know, he came in, he didn't know he was brought in as the turnaround guy. Well, one way to learn your business is to just look at the numbers, right? But that doesn't yep. tell you the whole story because the numbers don't exist without customers sending you dollars that then become those numbers, right? Yeah, that's so right. So he says, get to know your customer base. Why are they choosing your product? Why aren't they, you know, why haven't they chosen to upgrade or whatever that is? Learn what your customers think about you. That is, I mean, it's a, that's a huge thing, right? That, that's a huge thing for any business. Yeah. Well, yeah. and it kind of pull, pulls you out of your, your own bubble, right? Because, right. you know, you believe the story and yeah, there's everything. A, there's and a all. theme you to this episode. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yes, there is. And so, I mean, you know, he talks here about he's, you know, uh, made it a point to talk to, you know, 500 customers a year and ask them like a real simple question. Why did you choose a Drobo and how you use it and how, how you can improve it uh, with their products? And, you know, I love that. Uh uh, there was a, a a long run of time where I used to go on the map and and map out a, a a group of clients, and I would fly out, rent a car, and just start driving and meet with these dealer customers that were doing business with us. And I, I loved it; it was great. You get to meet some great people, and uh, connecting. I think uh, it, it's critically important. It, it's critical, yeah, because all business is just people business, right? Y you know, you can't yeah. do anything without other people. So whether they're your vendors or your customers, getting to know them and reminding each other that, yes, we're all human. Like, especially in today's, you know, the way everything's done. We do everything online. Email is very detached from the humanity aspect of things. Yeah, you can try and, you know, insert some level of, of, of personality in your email but like you have no idea how someone's interpreting that like what kind of mood they're That's in right. how they're seeing it it just there's no way to control that and really there's no way ever to control it but at least you get some reactions when you're meeting someone face to face even like you said if you're just kind of driving around and saying going and saying hi that's the oh yeah it's a huge it's thing yeah yeah it's, yeah. a, it's a big deal. And then number two, I mean, we've we've said it, I don't know how many hundreds of times on this show, uh, you know, cash is king, right? Yep. And, uh, you know, I would imagine, I mean, creating a piece of hardware and, or multiple pieces of it, you know, it's super cash intensive is what, you know, Mahir said. And a having access to capital is really important for the growth of the company. So in addition to an initial investment, you know, you have to get something going or whatever, you may need ongoing capital. So thinking long term, you know, what is our burn rate? And uh, your idea may be awesome and incredible, but so many businesses fail because they can't uh, realize their their goals without that on maybe perhaps ongoing investment, because maybe they can't generate that cash in the beginning. Right. Yeah. And you go, but you got to have a plan to generate that cash, yeah. even though, you know, your plan's going to change. You have to, sure. you know, I've always felt like when you're going to 
uh, either a bank or an investor or whatever it is, I think they know your plan's going to change too. But if you show up and just say, look, I didn't put together a plan because it's just, you, we all know it's going to change. Like that sends the message that you haven't really even thought about this yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You gotta have some, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of really detailed business plans just for that reason, because yeah. they change, but you got to have a story for your bank and, and uh, we should do a show, a show on that. I think we did do a show we on did, that. Uh, yeah. A while back. Yeah. yeah. But you yeah, gotta, I mean, you gotta to show them it. that you've got like, if things go as they look to be going now, here's how this is going to happen. And right. and show that that you have a handle on that and you understand it and it's not just thin air. And OK, yeah, I see it. We all know that's going to change. Fine. But OK, this is this is a realistic plan. Great. Let's you know that they, that, that allows, again, either the bank or, you know, an investor of, of another kind to evaluate the risk, because a lot of that is them risking you know, their feelings about you, right? What, sure. What does this person or this company, what are they going to be able to do uh, when, when plans change? So there you go. Yeah. yeah and, and I think as uh, small business owners, we talk on the show a lot about creating your own reality and, you know, the power of being optimistic and positive and you have to be careful and speaking from my own experience, there comes a time when you have to have a conversation uh, eventually at some point when something doesn't work right. And, you know, my personality is always to be like, oh, I, I don't want to have to go back to this investor or to the bank or, you know, whatever, or even my own bank account and and realize that this isn't going as planned and I have to do plan B or and I need another influx of capital to keep things going. It's not a fun conversation to look essentially look yourself in the mirror and say, this is not working. Yep. But if you don't do it, it's just going to push the problem down the road. And then it may be too late to, uh, to go back to your, you know, investor or where, however you're doing it, your bank. And and I've been there where a lot of times the bank says, Oh, we didn't know this was happening. We don't want to renew your line of credit, you know, right. or, or, you know, whoa, you should have told us six months ago, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, so you have to have that open, transparent uh, relationship uh, with, wherever your cash is coming from wherever. Yeah. Wherever it's coming from. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, number three, which we've already talked about a little bit here. He called it the culture club. Uh, but you know, getting everybody in the company thinking the same way about what it is you're doing and why you come to work every day. That's the, um, uh, you know, and he says when you're, when you're turning things around, the company will undergo a transformation. So everybody needs to be on board with, okay, here's the the new way and it's a better way. And, and you know, the future is bright, but we're going to have to work differently and or harder and probably both uh, yeah. to, to make this happen. So you got to get everybody on board with that vision. And that's that like, if you don't think about that, you're going to have a problem. But if you do think well, about it, yeah. that could be the one thing that that really is the the fatalist that I was going to say the foundation or catalyst. So I said fatalist. fatalist so it's the fatalist. There you go. It's a new word. Yeah. Fatalist. That's no, it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it's true. And, and sharing, uh, you know, good news and bad news, uh, you know, is, is critically important. And let them go. Hey, you know, we, if this didn't work or that didn't work, this goal, we didn't meet to here. We didn't do this. Um, getting them on board and getting that them vested in the success of the business and, and, uh, and one another is, is really very important. That's it. Yeah. Trusting what that's right. Trusting that the, the, yep. the team around is going to be able to do the things I'm not doing. And, and there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And then, you know, number four, he talks contract manufacturers with obviously is, you know, related to a, a hardware company that's building something. But, you know, even you could put suppliers in here, vendors, vendors. this kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. But you, you your your partners, they have to believe in your company and your vision. And in, in the case of Drobo, you know, you're your contract manufacturers are creating, building the products that you're designing. So they have to know that, okay, this is what's going on. They have a good plan, a good team um, and, and suppliers as well, especially if they're uh, extending you any kind of credit, uh, they need to be comfortable with your business plan and what's going on. And I, I recall that 
uh, as Mahir was telling a story about when he came on board Drobo, they had to go fly over to China and talk to their suppliers and and show them that plan. Cut and a deal. Hey, guys, yeah. cut a deal. We're going to give you a little bit of money. Not all of you're owed right now, but we want you to be on board with the turnaround and the growth. So uh, very important. And that, you know, even if you had the money, uh, if you can get one of your suppliers to sort of buy in that way, like, look, we're going to make a, a, you know, a good faith offering here. We know we owe this to you. We're going to come up with a plan to pay you. But if you pay them off, then they then that's a different thought process for them. Like, OK, we got out of that. We we're, yeah, that's we're, true. We're, we're at zero now. They don't <laughs> owe like us we have, anything. We're not vested anymore. We're not <laughs> vested anymore. Exactly. So we can walk away. And I remember somebody did that with us years and years ago. In fact, I think I can say the name of the company. It was Max Speech. They had a really hard time. I think it was OS ten point one or something. Um, they, they like they it was it was, they were famous for this. Like it like just the bottom fell out because they couldn't release a product. And they were really good about keeping in touch with us, though. Like, that's the thing. They owed us some money for previous ads. Fine. You know, and they since then, I mean, that company doesn't exist. They've been acquired and everything's all good. But, you know, they they were great about communication and they always picked up the phone when one of us called to say, hey, you know, where's the money? Uh, they yeah. never hid from that. They were, in fact, we never even had to call them. They were upfront about it. They were on top of it every month and like, okay, this month, I don't even know if there were months where they couldn't pay, but if there were, like sure. they told us about it before it happened, as opposed to just like, you know, sticking their heads in the sand and hoping that they didn't hear the phone ring or whatever. I, it was yeah. really well handled. And I've learned a lot from that. Like I've done that at times when we've been cash tight, it's like, okay, oh, yeah. wait, you know, I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm going to explain to you where I am. I'm going to explain to you what I want to do. And people like that, especially when they're oh, sort of, it's that forced vesting. I think it's really yeah, what that comes yeah. down. Well, to. and it kind of leads you into, you know, my here's number five communication. Yeah. Right. And, it is critical. It's, uh, you know, when there's a problem, like I, I would always say around our office, hey man, if there's a big problem around here, nobody's door gets closed. Everybody's office is open and we all are, are, are open and discussing this because if, you know, it, it can be human nature sometimes to be like, oh man, I can't deal with this. I got to close my door yeah. and kind of decompress. Just wait and I it say, out no, no, for go. a week. It'll be better. No way. It's no. like, go walk around the block and get your head, you know, because you have to be there for your team, just like you're, you're discussing here, you, a vendor, uh, a supplier, whatever you have, even the, even your landlord, if you're renting, I mean, we, we had a massive building, uh, that we were doing some projects at the time and, and adding some new, uh, channels to our business sure. and, it, and it didn't go well. You know, it worked in the beginning and then, you know, we don't have enough time to talk about why it, it didn't work, <laughs> but, uh, suffice to say that, you know, all of a sudden we didn't need this massive, you know, uh, 35,000 square foot building, but it was costing us a lot of money. And, you know, we worked with the landlord and it, to your point, the more we communicated with them and let them know what was going on and the more transparent we were with them, the more they partnered with us and they knew, okay, they're, they're going to eventually, they're going to get this paid. We know that, they, you know, they're this type of business and type of people that they are. Uh, we just couldn't pay them all at once. Sure. And eventually, you know, it, it took a long time, but we eventually got them all paid and made them whole. And because of that, because they worked with us, because I think they knew, well, if we just lock down on these guys, we're never going to get any money. Well, that's it. And, yeah. You know, you, you know that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I think everybody yeah. listening to the show has been in that scenario at some point where it's like, yeah, that company entity person owes me. Sure. But I know like blood from a stone doesn't work. Yeah. So no, let's be friendly. Let's make yep. sure you have a plan. Let's be, let's not ignore the fact that there's this, you know, issue. It's not the, the elephant in the room. It's just like, okay, it's a thing. Let's talk about it. Yeah. 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 Um, and you know, know, communicating whether it's, it's with your team within your business or, you know, all this stuff, it, it it's really important. So this is a great article. We'll, we'll link it up in the show notes and, uh, you can take a look at this and we'd certainly like to hear from you and how you may have used some of these things or some different things. You want to add a number six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. Um, let us know. Yeah. Share, Feedback share your story. Show.co. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. What yeah. else you got, Dave? Anything else? You Are know, we, uh... I had, I had one thing very quickly. Sure. Uh, 
we talked to, or we talked about, we didn't talk to, although we, we probably could, um, about Jean-Louis Gasset's two tokens method of customer service, right? The, oh, yeah. It's yeah. nothing or it's everything token. Uh, and, yep. and a quick recap is when it, either literally or figuratively, you're sitting down with a customer that has a problem. There are two tokens on the table. One says it's nothing. One says it's everything you get to pick first, but whatever one you pick, your customer picks the other. So if you pick the, it's nothing token, get ready because you're about to right. hear it's not nothing. Right. Yeah. And when they, when you say it's nothing, it's like, Oh, your problem's not that important versus wow, this is a big deal. And uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, and it, it is so true when you think about it. Yeah. Oh, it's totally true. It's just human yeah. nature. When a customer, yeah. if a customer is so upset with you, uh, what they just won't talk to you anymore. They'll just write you off and walk away. But if a customer brings you a problem, it's actually because they want it solved. They might yeah. not. They might not be so clear about that. They might need to rant and vent and yada yada. That's fine. But sure. if they're if they're talking with you about this. It's because they want they see that a solution is possible and they're hoping you can facilitate that. So by you kind of taking that. So anyway, that he was, uh, you know, president of what Apple France for a while. Right. And yep. and that's where he kind of, you know, uh, forged this two tokens method. Well, Apple recently released their HomePod speaker. And then people started realizing that the HomePod uh, makes rings on wood furniture. Yep. And. You know, <laughs> Apple's response was effectively, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. it happens all the yeah, time. That's right. Fascinating. That's the to wrong, watch. wrong token. Yep. It's it's the you're holding it wrong token, which goes back yep. to Steve Jobs with the what the iPhone four or four S, whatever it was, that's that right. needed a bumper so that you didn't short the antenna with your skin. But yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, you know, you had that guy there. You could have learned from him. Make a big yeah. deal out of it. Uh, offer yeah, I agree. You know, hey, we're you know, I'll send you we'll send you a little coaster, I'll send you, or, you a know, coaster. a little piece of coke or a cork or whatever and and some way to convey that wow, we know this is an issue and we're on it. And you know, I you could you could argue that the way they handled kind of the battery situation was was kind of similar. It's yeah. like, oh, you know, we, it's it, their processors this and it uses the battery and it kind of surges and the batteries get older and and you can certainly talk the tech side more than I can, but um uh Instead of really being transparent and open about it and, and taking that token, well, whoa, this is a big deal for people because these phones are so important. It was like, well, let's just do this update and we won't say anything. Yeah. And, the, and yeah. then when it came out, you know, all hell broke loose and, and they look like the bad guy when they were actually trying, imagine, to, to smooth out some some of these issues. Yep. Um, and, and uh, you know, we could do a whole episode on yeah. uh, hubris. It's <laughs> and the, the hubris that, of Apple. Yeah, exactly. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's and, crazy. Uh, lo, you know, yeah. But it's, it's a good question. Definitely worth revisiting that uh, Jean-Louis Gasset two tokens. Uh, we did an episode on it. We'll yep. link his article here. And it, it I believe it should be the foundation of your customer service plan and every customer service person you have should read that article and understand exactly how it works and why they need to convey that this is critically important to us that we solve this problem for you because then your customers are just going to breathe a sigh of relief that someone is listening to them. That's uh, right. And, and you know, that's and I think all, it's that's, important. That's step yeah. one. It's yeah. just step one. You need to then fulfill on that. But of course, it, they need, you need to just make them feel like and you can't just say, I hear you. You need to show that you hear them. Yeah. Yeah. Action, man. You action. got to take some some kind of action. Yep. And uh, and and then what you have is an opportunity to earn a customer for life that then becomes an evangelist for your business because the way you solve the problem. Yep. And I used to tell my people this all the time. It's like, you know. Th this person will stick with you forever if you really show empathy and, you know, think about, especially in where everything's e-commerce and fulfillment and you get something and you're waiting for it to show up and you're building up this thing in your head, how it's going to work and what it's going to look like. And you open this box and it's not how it looks and it's not how it's supposed to work. And you're upset and, uh, you know, it's a big deal, big deal. Yeah.
It's a big deal. So cool. Yeah. Yep. So awesome. Anyway, man. it just seemed ironic. It was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Apple picked up the it's nothing token. I can't believe <laughs> the it. Wrong, the wrong one. They're not sending out T-shirts. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. No, I don't and think so. Either. My guess uh. is that their margins on that HomePod are pretty healthy. But that's uh, just you a think. Guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm returning would, uh, mine, by the way. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. it's Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Cool, man. That was some good stuff today. Uh, we'd love to hear from you folks either at feedback at business or at, uh, uh, at the small business show, uh, facebook.com. Yeah. So, well, Facebook, uh, uh, business, small show business show slash, slash Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got, man. You, you got anything else or are we, it. uh, we're good. Well, no, yeah. I'm, uh, I think we're all set. All right. Well, Who, then it's who's time our sponsor of this show? That's right. It was Jamf. J A M F dot com slash S B S. Get your first three devices for free for life.